So, I will first start with a sheet of gold that is on the thicker setting and I will apply very lightly uh, a cracked texture and that is going to be the inside of my cuff. So uh, this is practically the base on which everything else will be. And uh, I know it might seem a little bit uh, flimsy, but I can assure you that in the end it will not be flimsy. I did not make it uh, thicker than this because with all the added decorations, it would have become really thick and really heavy and really ugly. <laughs> so, uh, to start with, um, I did inspire myself uh, in making this um, bracelet on the early dynasties of ancient Egypt. You see, for the next step, I have mixed gold and white pearl, and then I'm going to use gold metal powder in it, not mica, the metal powder. And the easiest way to mix it in the clay is to just sprinkle it on your working table and then just uh, grab it with your clay, fold the clay with the powder inside, and then just keep folding, picking up the metal powder folding and you'll see that it gets in the clay way easier if you have watched my tutorial on metal shift you know that um, that is what happens with metal powder instead of uh, mica powder now let's get on and do the lapis this time i am making a really really uh, clear high quality uh, lapis imitation so I have my combination of ultramarine in black and just plain ultramarine. And I'm going to uh, shave a little bit of ultramarine uh, chalk pastel and then simply um, spread it over and mince. First mince them separately because you don't want them to be too mixed you want those crumbs to be uh, nice and separate uh, the crumbs of each color and then once you have mixed them separately real good then you can uh, mix them together and then mince some more now we are going to add some silver leaf but we don't want it to be equally uh, distributed through all the, the mix we have. Because this is how the, um, the little pyrite flecks are in the real uh, high quality lapis. Uh, they will be in little swarm like uh, area. So you, you see I have divided my um, uh, minced clay into three. In one of the parts I will not put any kind of silver foil. Uh, in the second one, I have a little bit of silver foil, and in the third one, I have more silver foil. Why didn't I place the silver foil from the start? Because with all this mincing, it would have become way too small, and it would have been not noticeable. And no, it's not a good idea to mix a glitter. The best thing is to mix silver foil, uh, not foil, sorry, silver leaf. The foil is thicker than the leaf. Uh, so once you have uh, your three uh, minced um, mounds, I don't know how to call them, <laughs> uh, just uh, start putting them together and form a little uh, bowl. A little bowl of uh, minced clay but the thing is that when exactly like for the other lapis uh, tutorials do not press too hard as to make those little crumbs uh, start actually mixing with each other what you want is to simply press them hard enough together that they will stick to each other which of course because you had the dust and the dust is exactly to allow you to cut it into thin crumbs without sticking to, to itself too much. But then just simply press gently until you get a little block that you form in a ball and then you flatten. 
um, make sure that you get the proper distance from the edge and your that will be your scarab by the way and the proper size and then once you uh, shape it properly then you can cut it in two we will use just half of that for the scarab itself and the other half we'll use for something else you'll see in a minute so uh, gently uh, bevel and round the edges of it to form a nice oval cabochon after which of course place some bacon bond on the back If you have a cabochon mold that is the proper size, of course, by all means, use the cabochon mold. Unfortunately, mine was a little bit too big, and the one that's smaller, it's a little bit too narrow. So, there we go. That's our faux lapis. And as I said, I'm pla uh, placing some bacon bond on the back, and then I will um, place my cabochon on the cuff now very careful to place it exactly in the center because that is very 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 important to have it exactly in the center now we are going to imitate the lines that usually especially in the earlier dynasties in ancient egypt the scarabs were very stylized they would have one vertical line that divide the wings and one uh, curved horizontal line that would pretty much divide the thorax from uh, the wings and sometimes a secondary line that would stand for the head of the scarab here i'm just using another uh, bracelet blank to but you can use the back of a round cutter uh, to do the slightly rounded um impression that uh, divides the thorax from the wings and then i'm using the back of my rigid blade to do the cut that divides uh, the wings and then i will place a secondary line uh, that would be for the head of the scarab now let's go ahead and do the wings uh, the scarab was considered to be one of the representations of the goddess isis so usually it would be shown with uh, the sun above its head like it would be reaching for the sun and with isis's wings on both sides so i'm going to use just some uh, a little dot of pomegranate for the sun disc for the atun and yeah it's a difference between the atun and the god ra the atun is simply the sun disc that late in later dynasties was actually worshipped by akhenaten who wanted to replace the polytheist Egyptian pantheon with a monotheist one it was almost like the precursor of Christianity now uh, from the other part of the lapis of the full lapis I have flattened it a little bit and then see I am cutting it with a little bit of a diagonal so it will be uh, slightly wider on one end than on the other and I will be using these to make the first line of the stylized wings. Um, now, of course, uh, these wings can be done uh, way uh, more refined. But again, I went for the, um, the look of the jewelry of the um, uh, older dynasties. Uh, and at that time, uh, they were actually placing um, the chips of gemstone into molten uh, gold. So it almost has the look of um, little tiny tiles of gemstones that were placed in goldish type cement. Uh, and uh, this is why I am doing the wings this way because I am trying to imitate that look 
the other thing is that uh, for those specific uh, pieces that are uh, from the older dynasties, and we are talking here more than 3,000 years, um, and the thing was that the gold itself uh, was not exceptionally purified. So sometimes uh, there would be pieces in which you can see several different um, um, colors, hues of gold, depending on the purity of it, because different batches that they were making had different uh, purities. So because of that, uh, you can find on the same piece gold that looks a little bit more reddish and gold that looks a little bit more whitish, more yellowish. And this is exactly what I am trying to imitate here. And um, this is why we made that um, a mix of gold white with metal powder. That would be my gold that is a little bit whiter. So arrange this first line of full lapis in two semicircles, approximate semicircles on uh, each side of the scarab. Make sure that they are uh, very nice and symmetrical. Um, I am using here a little lollipop stick to shape them properly. You can use whatever that was handy for me. <laughs> I didn't want to stretch and grab something else. But uh, it's very important that they are symmetrical. You can create yourself a template if you want. Uh, then don't let them go all the way into the scarab. Leave about one and a half to two millimeters. And again, check that they look perfectly symmetrical. If needed be, uh, trim some more. And um, after which, we are going to actually cut it like if they were uh, little tiles, because that's exactly the look of the uh, uh, wings in uh, jewelry of the older dynasties. As I said, it would be like little chips, little tiles of the gemstone that were embedded in uh, molten gold so that is what we are trying to imitate here and this will be the first row of so-called uh, feathers of the wings uh, yes i am using the roller to make sure that all my little tiles are perfectly uh, even and have a, a straight surface and once again, the cane benders of Tiny Pandora, they make such beautiful small rollers. I'm sorry, Teresa, but I love them the most for this, more than for bending canes. Uh, then I will, I will take some uh, turquoise primo. And again, I'm cutting a, a rectangle and see, I'm cutting again in a diagonal. And this way I will have again, um, the area of the wings that's going to be a little bit wider at the base and thinner at the top so that I can form the specific shape of Isis's wings and I'm placing bacon bond and then I will be placing the turquoise leaving about one to one and a half millimeters between the turquoise, four turquoise and four lapis bands. And then, of course, once again, make sure that they are both uh, symmetrical. And then uh, once you arrange them and they are both symmetrical, simply do again with the back of your rigid blade cut them into so-called tiles
Now, while this is baking for another 20 minutes, let's do a little bit of hieroglyphs. I have this pretty uh, stamp and I'm going to place it on the um, mix of gold and white pearl with metal powder. That is on the fourth thickest setting. I'm not going to need all of this, you know, but I just made it because I love the stamp. Now, um, I'm taking a little bit of that mix and I'm going to put uh, a bit of clay softener in it so it would get very, very soft. And if you remember my tutorial on uh, clay inlay, this is exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to push it in all the um, little uh, crevices that are between the tiles of uh, four turquoise and four lapis so it would look exactly like the ancient uh, bracelets where they were putting the uh, chips of gemstone in molten gold so do this uh, very very carefully you have to push that clay if it's not um, thin enough thinned out enough to go in just add a little bit more um, clay softener to it and then simply push it in until it gets in between uh, the tiles and um, once you manage to cover everything up and then you can start uh, trimming the excess and you shall see it's not hard to uh, clean all that area it might seem very messy but it actually is not and it's very easy to clean so after you have pushed all the clay and remember that you need to cover those lines that are in the scarab as well with the mix of um, a gold and white pearl and uh, gold metal powder but make sure again press hard enough so that you will push the softened clay in all the little lines and crevices and i had a couple times to add a little bit more clay softener and you want to cover including the space between the um, uh, two lines of lapis and uh, turquoise but not at this point at this point what you want to do is to make sure that all your crevices between the little tiles are covered you see I'm using a toothpick to remove the brunt of the excess clay and why I am removing for now the clay that's in between the two strips is because I want to make sure that I have pressed uh, clay in the thin lines that are towards the inside in that uh, groove that's between the four turquoise and the four lapis and check very well to make sure that you have pushed the clay all over and then you can uh, with the paper towel that you spray some alcohol on you can go ahead and wipe everything that's too much because alcohol will uh, dissolve the clay and will not go in between the little um, tiles so you can see perfectly if you did or not uh, fill up all the lines the other reason why i am not pushing in uh, clay between the strip of four turquoise and four lapis is because of the mica slash metal shift uh, remember that uh, the shift is fairly strong and i don't want to have too many differences uh, in color so uh, to fill that up I am going to actually um, get a sheet of the clay that is prepared with the uh, gold white pearl and um, metal powder 
uh, and pass it through the machine until it gets the sheen and then use only um, you shall see only strips that I cut and you have to get the sheet at the same uh, thickness as your uh, little four gemstone uh, tiles chips so because of the fact that I do not want the darker side the the dull side of the mica shift slash metal shift to show I only want the shiny side this is why I am uh, actually cutting strips so I can place them with the sheen facing upwards so uh, put a, with the, the help of a toothpick put some bacon bond in that um, gouge crevice however you want to call it and then place one of the strips push it the same as you did with uh, the softened clay and then use a small roller or the handle of a paintbrush or whatever to make sure that it went all the way in and then uh, simply um, a skim the um, the excess clay and once again you shall use the paper towel soaked in alcohol to remove all the excess which works very very good then once you do this part you use the remaining strips to place a kind of a bezel actually it's a setting and once again the way that they were doing it they were uh, they had these little molds they would melt the um, uh, gold in and then they were gently placing the little uh, chips little tiles of uh, precious gemstone uh, and arrange them so they, that they would form patterns so this is what we are trying to reproduce here there will still be a little bit of mica slash metal shift in there but I'm going to try and cover it up with wax in the final stage and again I apologize if I do get out of the camera view at one point or another but uh, I really had issues seeing and uh, hopefully I'll get a new monitor soon and this won't happen anymore <laughs> I'll be able to see exactly what's happening on the screen but um, as I said arrange the remaining strips all around the wing make sure that you push the strip all the way in especially on the on the inner uh, arc formed by the wings and then uh, smooth it out and trim whatever excess there might be now let's place a few um, insets of hieroglyphs and I'm going to use um, cutters uh, there's a set of cutters uh, I'm going to place links for uh, whatever I used in this tutorial in the description of the video and you can find this set in my Amazon influencer store <coughs> but I liked especially uh, one shape of cutter that I'm going to use <coughs> <coughs> excuse me and I thought it's very fitting with the shape of the bracelet see that one and I'm going to cut uh, so that I would have several rows of the hieroglyphs and these will go on both sides of the wings and then I will place another uh, hieroglyph inset at the very end of the cuff. 
so of course uh, placing some bacon bond and everything that you place as a decoration on the bracelet has to be the exact same thickness and I went pretty much with um, the third thickest setting or the fourth you can go try the fourth as well it would still give enough uh, sturdiness to the bracelet uh, here you have to pay a lot of attention that both uh, your insets are um, at the same distance from the wing so you have to be very careful with the symmetry of the bracelet I will also place um, a small uh, semicircle inside the wings. Here I have another stamp with hieroglyphs. Well, just to to make the whole uh, wing uh, look more uh, like the ancient pieces of jewelry. And yeah, the way they were doing this, they were actually stamping. Uh, they were stamping the uh, gold as it would uh, start getting colder. So those will be the pieces for the end of the bracelet. And I'm placing them there to give a little bit more sturdiness. And of course, bacon bond on the back. And then once again, very careful to place them in identical spots for the symmetry. Here I went off camera. I'm sorry. I apologize. But I'll show you how they look like after they are placed. And now let's place the two semicircles inside the wings. So for this I'm going to simply cut a circle that I am sure will fit, if cut in two, will fit between the body of the scarab and the wing. But because I want to preserve one hieroglyph on each of those uh, halves, I'm actually going to cut two circles so that I can have uh, a plain full hieroglyph on each of the halves and I've chosen the um, the falcon uh, which is one of the uh, representations of Osiris and of Ra sometimes because we also go for the whole solar uh, symbol and I am simply placing them on each side of the scarab body uh, before baking this and um, because you'll have to bake for another 20 minutes the this piece requires a lot of successful uh, successive um, bakings uh, make sure that with a little um, q-tip dipped in alcohol you clean all the um, uh, spots where you might have bacon bond left And um, then you can simply buff it. You don't really have to sand because of the way you did it and uh, smoothing it out with alcohol. It is fairly shiny without sanding. You can sand the scarab if you want, especially if you want to remove, uh, if you have some of that clay uh, getting too much out of the um crevices then you can sand it off but normally you don't really have to do a lot of sanding now let's go and then place some settings around those hieroglyph inlays and then we will place uh, also a line of uh, rectangles surrounding the uh, biggest hieroglyph inlay 
for this I have um, again uh, done the gold this time the pure gold uh, clay through the same uh, thickness as the rest of the um, decorating elements and first I'm going to place some bacon bond around the little solar disk and you will see I decided also to add two more little discs uh, with four lapis on each side of the scarab's head and all you have to do is to make sure that you press it well against um, the disc and that uh, that you uh, smooth out the two edges where they join and you can see I'm using my little sculpting tool to make sure that all is nice and smooth and even yes you will have a little bit of mica shift on the sides but again that can be covered with the metallic wax and uh, just as a heads up i'm going to use the um, prima marketing uh, metallic for the area of regular gold i'm going to actually use the aged brass and for the area of the whiter gold of course i'm going to use the white gold um and do the same type of bezel slash setting around each of the uh, hieroglyph inlays they're not inlays they actually have a name I'll have to remember and put it in the video description but right now it just flew out of my brain I cannot remember how it's called so once again um, push the strip to be perfectly against that um, little disc with hieroglyphs and then smooth out where the two ends are joining so that you'll have a nice and smooth and even uh, bezel slash setting and then gently bevel it against the a hieroglyph disk and do the same thing with the other shape that contains hieroglyphs after which we will create the uh, two little discs of full lapis and of course do a bezel around them what I'm going to do though is because I'm placing uh, both of them after everything is baked and because they are both raw I'm going to actually place the bezel slash setting around the disc before placing the disc on the bracelet but um, as I announced this is a fairly long video because I didn't want to skip over any of the steps so that you can see exactly how each of the uh, steps is done do you have to add all these things um, I don't know it's up to you how close you want to be uh, to the original jewelry of that uh, time they did have a lot of decorative elements added actually on this one I did not place as many as they used to place in uh, later dynasties there wouldn't be so many and there will be more space and you'll have a lot of plain lines and uh, 
uh, circles and uh, semi-spheres, but in the early dynasties, there was a lot of uh, decoration, a lot of decorative elements that would just pretty much crowd the surface of any piece of jewelry. And there were a lot more of those uh, little mosaic type um, gemstone chip inlays. Uh, if you do a search, for example, with ancient uh, Egypt um, Isis wings, uh, you'll find there are some pieces that are made entirely of this type of a mosaic in the early dynasties. But it will still look uh, fairly close to uh, the originals. It's not inspired, it's not a replica of anything, it's just, you know, ideas taken from several pieces. As I said, uh, two of the pieces that are in uh, the museum um, in Cairo and one that's in a German museum. And uh, you can see the, um, actually the winged scarab, including on the um, uh, pieces of jewelry adorning um, uh, King Tut. He actually has both a bracelet and an amulet with the winged scarab. So let's go ahead and uh, cut a little bit more strips. And I want them to be slightly rounded. And they're about a millimeter and a half thick. And um, I will be placing them to form pretty much a triangle around the bigger uh, hieroglyph and then I will uh, use my blade to um, divide them into rectangular pieces.
Now I got uh, what was left of my faux lapis and I just rolled it into a little sausage. And I'm going to cut two slices of that. that I will wrap in a very thin strip of the gold clay. As I said, I'm getting them already wrapped before I put them on the bracelet. And uh, you can see I'm rounding them up a little bit to give them more of a gem-like aspect. And of course, as for the um, uh, faux coral one, uh, make sure that you blend nicely the two ends and also make it a little bit beveled. Do the same for the second one. I know this is a piece that requires a lot of work, uh, but in my opinion, it's totally worth it and it will look very very special again you don't have to make it exactly like i made it um as an idea for the wings uh they used onyx they used coral uh they used even malachite uh besides turquoise and lapis um and they sometimes used carnelian but you will not find a lot of carnelian in the mosaic chips for wings but generally speaking if you go with turquoise coral uh, malachite lapis then you should obtain something that's uh, fairly close to the ancient ones now after baking it you need to apply some wax i just didn't think that this needs to get even longer <laughs> by showing you the whole wax application uh, you just simply apply wax the lighter one on the whitish gold and the um, uh, aged brass on the more goldish gold now be very careful the way that i did the fastening here um, i have some very old gold looking uh, toggle clasps in the circle of it um, i have this thin gold chain it's not gold of course it's not gold it's gold looking um that it went through the bale of the round but it did not go through the bale of the toggle so what i did um i actually uh, put the chain going through the bale of the circle and then I just put it together with a jump ring. But for the toggle, um, I made actually a double coil jump ring. And I also made the regular jump ring because I was completely out of gold looking jump rings. The good thing was that I do have some uh, eye pins that are gold looking. So I just made my own jump rings, a simple one for the circle and a double coil for the toggle. And um, what I did, um, I used the double coil to connect the um, doubled chain to the toggle. And then I used two uh, tear shaped pieces of the um, uh, lighter gold clay and I put the chain itself between those pieces and on the inside of the bracelet between those pieces and the um, uh, bracelet itself of course using bacon bond and then I used the texture to make some more hieroglyph imprints on the inside And here you can see how I'm struggling <clears throat> real hard to put everything with my pinching issues. Remember, I cannot do a lot of pinching. 
motions and hopefully the camera will focus enough to show you everything but yeah I'm using the double coil ring to um, uh, connect the um, circle of chain to the toggle and then the regular jump ring to connect together the ends of the chain that goes through the uh, bail of the circle of the toggle clasp. Now I got my two little, little teardrop shapes And I'm going to try and show you exactly how I did. It's a little bit of a very, uh, it's a little bit, it's a very awkward angle uh, to get everything showing, but I'm going to try. So I am placing the chain going right through the middle of that teardrop shape and I'm pressing it a little bit in place. And then I'm going to place it on the back See on the back of the end of the bracelet and then I'm taking the hieroglyph stamp and stamping it. <laughs> 